Hello and welcome to the next part in the series of tutorials where I'll be showing you how to visualize your very own networks. Now this is the final part of this series. However, I always leave it open in case any of you have any great ideas. Please do comment below and I'll have it as a part five or even a part six and so on, just until we stop having any more great ideas. But at this part, what we're gonna do is we're gonna continue from where we left off last time where we had manually created lists and manually inputted sizes. I'm going to turn this, what we see in front of us, into something that is a bit more dynamic and looks a bit like this, where nodes have their sizes based upon how important they are in that network. So if we go to the code in Visual Studio, this is what we had before. I put hashes in front of everything because this is no longer the code we're going to be using. But essentially what we had before was we created two sizes in lists and we basically manually typed it in and specified those sizes of each one of those nodes. And so what, we've, what I've done is I've created something that's a bit more dynamic and basically what it does is it counts how many times that node appears in the list and then it multiplies that count by a size and then so what you end up with is a sizing based upon importance. So if you go back to the picture here, you can see that one is surrounded by nine other nodes here. So one is the biggest. However, we can also see here that four is surrounded by five nodes of red and one main node being that one that we mentioned earlier. And so it's arguably the second most important, which is why it's the second biggest. And so we're going to add that to what we created in our last tutorial. So let's go back to our code. So what I've done is I have created essentially two for loops. And what I've done, I've sort of done it in reverse, so I'm working backwards. So we're starting with the red nodes. And I've, what I've done is I've created um, an array called NX Edge List Array 2. And I've done that by typing np.array and then in brackets NX Edge List 2. And NX Edge List 2 is if we go right up to the top, is our edges that we've created here. And the reason why I use edges rather than nodes is because we want to know uh, the connections. It's all about connections with networks. So we, we want to see how many times that connection, that node is mentioned in those connections. And that's what makes it important. And so what I've done is I've created this NX edge list array two. And then below that, I've created a, an empty list by typing in node size two equals, and then as open bracket and a closed square bracket. And what I'm going to do is populate that square empty list with sizes based upon how many times that node appears in the in that edge list. Cool. So how we then populate this blank list is if you type in 4i in range of 11 to 16, so we're making sure we're getting those five red nodes and then in below that type in occurrences two equals np dot and this is where it is this is what the magic is it's count underscore non-zero what count underscore non-zero does is it basically counts however many times that number appears in that list in this case it's array list so in that count non-zero function if we call our nx edge list array two, and then equals i. So i will be our iterator. It will start in our range of 11 to 16. And then below that, our size value two equals occurrences two times by 250. So that is our factor we're going to multiply it by. So if it, if it appears once, then its size will be 250. If it appears twice, it'll be 500 three times 750 and so on. 
And then below that, we're going to, after we've found our sizes that we want, the next thing we can do is just populate it by appending it to our empty node size two list. And then what I've done here is a print check to see whether the values are appearing that we want and then we're expecting. Cool, so node size two is our values for our second node. So if we run that, let me just hash this out. See here we have five values of 250. So remember that in our range 11 to 16, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, each one of those appears once. And that sounds about right when we look at our end of part three photo and we have 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 appearing once only connected by one node, in this case, node number four. So they all should be 215 size and they are. This is why I like starting in reverse because we're now able to basically start from the least, from right at the, right from the edges of the network and go back into the center. Okay, now we're gonna go one step in to our first level. And one thing we have to consider is that this node number four is not only appearing in our first level, but also in our second level here. Because when you created the edges, it's four and 13, four and 11 and so on, as well as one and four. So we have to bear that in mind when creating our next level, our first level. Cool, so let's do exactly the same what we did up above is we've created our empty list, this time just with simple node NH edge list array, not with the two on the end. So node size one for our replacing our sizes one. Then we have our for loop again. We'll leave that a little bit. Have our have our occurrences here in our node size one, our size values for our first list, and we can also print our first node sizes one. So what I've unlocked here and here are exactly the same as here, except I've just left out this middle bit here, which I'll explain in a moment. So then if I run it, we should get some decent values of one to 10. Here, as we do, we have 2,250, 25, 25, 250, 250, and so on and so on to the end. But what this does is if we go to the fourth node along, you know, one, two, three, four, we see here that the value here is 250. And what node four actually is, it's actually not just should be counted for the for the first level it should be counted for the second level as well because that's what connects those red nodes to the blue ones so it actually should be bigger because it's more important and that's where this idea of this if function here will come in so if we can say if i equals four what we can do is we can get this list of second occurrences because remember in the array we have four appearing everywhere connecting the blue nodes to the red nodes and so we can account that and then we can also count the occurrences in the first level as well of the blue nodes and we can add those both those occurrences up both occurrence one occurrences one the first set and occurrences two the second set and we can times that by 250 and then we can append that instead and then we just raise that value of i, I plus one because you don't want the same thing again happening for four. Because if we just left it without i plus I, without i equals i plus one, it would do the occurrences for i equals four. But we've done that up here, so we just want to put it up one more value and have it moving on. And so if we run that now, we will get our our known number four now saying a decent value. So now this second list here is more reflective of how important those nodes are. So what we can do now 
is we can now modify this drawing of the networks to include our new filled out lists. So instead of sizes one and sizes two, we can have NX, we're gonna have node size one and node size two. So we're gonna have the NX draw network X, node size one. We can get rid of this column now instead of sizes one. We can get rid of these sizes one lists and we can continue to draw a pretty awesome looking network graph. Here and here, we can keep, uh, we can add our labels again and then we can save it as part four, which is how I showed you before. But for this case, I'm just gonna show you. So if we can run it, we start it and run it. Here we have our final picture. It's a sim exactly the same as what I showed you before in at, right at the beginning of this video, except it's just sort of rotated slightly. And so that is how you can make this network more dynamic and have node sizes dependent upon how important they are. And be careful to consider the not just in that first level, but also how that node is connected to other levels and other nodes within the network. And it's all about the connections and the edges rather than the nodes themselves, which will determine their size. So I hope you've enjoyed that tutorial. That's all I'm gonna show you now in this series. If you have anything else you'd like to see, then please do comment below and I'll have a part five going on or even a part six and part seven, so on and so forth. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks very much for watching.